this is the video you've been waiting for and the one that you should be watching for the person in your life, for, for, for ideas, for gifting the person. If you got somebody in, if you have an EDC person in your life, this is the video you should you just show. My brain's shutting down. It's shutting down. Welcome back, everybody. My name is Taylor Martin. This is the best MEDC, and I, the universe tells me this video should not happen. This is take four. Actually, probably more than that, but regardless, it's Black Friday. It's the holidays. If you have an EDC person in your life, this is the video you should be watching. Get ideas for gifts for them for Christmas or whatever holiday you celebrate. So, with that said, let's do the damn thing. So every year I do this video, it gets harder and harder to make because I try not to make the same video year after year. I want new and fresh things to recommend, but I have staples, right? But for me this year, the reason it was so hard to make this list is because I actually have finally pared down my stuff to basically the same things every day. I rotate watches and knives, and other than that, the same stuff has been in my pocket for the vast majority of the year. So it's hard for me to make a list with totally new and novel things when I've really pared down what I carry. But I've gone out of my way to make this a very interesting and different list than previous years. I wanted it to be something that's interesting, but also insightful and helpful to those of you looking to gift the person in their life with something they'd actually want. So to start things off, we're gonna go with this right here, you like that? I didn't even look, the no look grab. This right here comes from everybody's favorite person in the industry, Mr. Ben Peterson of NAFS Company or NAFS Co. And I think this right here is one of the biggest or highest value items that you can get for your money. This is his tool burrito, the loaded version. Obviously the, the burrito itself is really nice, but the loaded version is where the value is. It's $90 and you get everything that's inside here currently as well as a couple of other things. Obviously I used a lot of honing compound, maybe a little too much, but you do get a leather strop with some honing compound that I'm not keeping in here, but it does come with some. Uh, you have a tube of Tough Glide, which I haven't opened because I have many tubes of Tough Glide and other lubricants that I use. You have a plastic pry bar that comes from iFixit, a small tube of Loctite, and this iFixit precision driver that takes the four millimeter bits, the micro bits. Comes with a Weeha bit and two spares. They're right here in this little zipper pouch. So you have three bits in total. Obviously I would recommend getting some more bits. And then the other thing that it comes with that I don't have is the titanium ruler and angle finder. So it has slots on there so you can find the angle of the bevel on your knife before you sharpen it, if that's something you're interested in. And it also is a ruler and it's titanium and it's cool. But this right here for $90 is a ridiculous value and the last time I checked they were restocked on his website so I think this is one of the best things on this list period kind of in the same vein is one of my favorite things I've found this year and it's one of the reasons that I stock them on my website carry commission this is a knife roll or a tool roll from B&W Bushcraft they make really awesome stuff basically anything they make is really high quality really nice wax canvas and they do a lot of really custom stuff too with cool and interesting fabrics, but this knife roll, this is the maple tool roll, is awesome. It's one of the first things I wanted to put on carry commission. It holds 13 knives, and then you have two additional, like all these pockets are the same size, these 13, and then you have two additional pockets, one extra wide and one that's for like a pin, but I put the bit bar inline in there. These things are $65, and I think for that, this thing is really, really nice. These things are all offset, your clips don't really touch and they are rolled up. And then you have a little strap that goes around the outside. I think it rolls up really nicely. It does get very heavy with, you know, 15-ish tools in there. P&W Bushcraft Maple Tool Roll. We have some of these in stock on Carry Commission, but if we do run out, you can buy them direct from P&W Bushcraft as well. Highly recommend. This next one is a little bit different. Uh, you guys have heard me talk about Holman Hadfield before, but this is a brand new product from Holman Hadfield. It is not available right now. You can back it on Kickstarter, but this, this segment is Holman Hadfield. Any of their watch boxes, their knife boxes. I just did a video recently on Holman Hadfield talking about the Armory and the Collector. 
The Collector is a large watch box. The Armory is a large knife box. This is the amalgamation of everything Holman Hatfield has done to date. And it is a sign that they actually listen to customer feedback. One of the things that I complained about is having to take this whole acrylic off when you want to get to your watch or knife. They have put a hinged acrylic on this one. This is called the combo deck. And the reason, notice I have knives and watches in this, and you have a watch post and a knife slot, I guess is what we're, we're gonna call it. The reason it's called the combo deck is not only because you can do that, you can do this right here. Oh, you didn't expect that, did you? Look at this. You can do three knives and one watch if you want. You can do three watches and one knife if you want. You can buy additional posts, which I have two that are unopened, and you can set this up however you would like. It comes with this nice little leather pad to keep it really nice and clean and free from scratches from your gear. This thing is awesome. This is the best thing that Holman Hadfield has made to date. And of course, you still get the drawer on the inside. It is felt lined. You have two additional knife slots and just room to put some other knickknacks. But any of these display cases from Holman Hadfield would make an amazing gift. So the next item on this list actually comes from the sponsor of today's video, Koenig Safe. So the Koenig Safe 1.0 is not only a great way to keep something like a firearm safe and secure, but also quickly accessible. It's also a great way to store your valuables or other things that you want to keep away from tiny hands. For me and a lot of you, it is a great way to keep something like your knives out of reach of a toddler. My toddlers come to my bedside every single morning as soon as I wake up. And if I leave something out of my nightstand, they are grabbing it which means I cannot leave knives out because they will grab them. That's why for the last several months, I've been using this on my nightstand and, and basically using it as a dump tray. I put my watch, my knives, all the valuables, and the most important thing, let me show you. This right here. If I don't lock up my chapstick, it's gone. My daughter will just put it on tirelessly all day without me knowing, because I'm at the office, she goes to my nightstand, grabs my chapstick, and it's gone. So I put my chapstick in one of these, and this is about how I use it. I put it on my nightstand, throw my stuff in there at night, close it up, and nobody can get to it. These safes are battery operated. They can be charged using a port on the back. If they're plugged in, there are two additional ports on the rear where you can charge two devices via USB. On a battery, it's gonna last anywhere from three months to about a year, depending on how often you use it, but it will let you know when the battery is getting low. There's also an iPhone app that's coming, I think also an Android app. In the app, you'll get notifications when the battery's low and also alerts for if it's been tampered with while you're not there and it's armed. There are three main ways to access the stuff inside your safe. Obviously, there's a keypad right here, a fingerprint reader, and you can also use RFID to engage the safe, I guess. You press this button and you tap it with a tag. It opens, same thing for your keypad and fingerprint reader. But one of the coolest things they sell, they sell wristbands, rings, all these different RFID things. But the coolest thing is probably these little stickers because you could stick this on the bottom of, a bottle's a bad example, but it's, let's say there's a candle or something on your nightstand, you stick this to the bottom of it, nobody else is really gonna know it's there, but if you push the shield, you can get to your stuff super, super fast. As you can see on the bottom, there's a way that you can attach these to a solid surface, but there's also a tether mount on the back as well. These Koenig saves are normally $300. The Junior is normally $150, but from now until Monday, these are gonna be 40% off, but if you use my coupon code, you can get an additional 10% off of that 40% off, just use coupon code BESTMEDC at checkout. These things are awesome. I've genuinely been using one of these on my nightstand. I don't have to worry about my kids getting my knives anymore. That is super valuable to me, but I can also keep them from running around with my watches. Super, super valuable. So hit the link in the description down below, check them out, use coupon code BESTMEDC for 10 additional percent off. And once again, I wanna thank Koenigsafe for sponsoring the video. I normally don't recommend any specific EDC items in these lists. I normally am recommending things that go along, like a maintenance kit and a storage device and a lockbox. But I'm gonna break my own rules this year and recommend products because I think that anybody would be happy with any of these items if they got them. If they were backups, secondaries, even third or fourths of a certain item, any of these that I got multiples of, I'd be super happy with. So I feel like anybody in your life, if you purchase something like this for them, they'll feel the same way, at least I hope. So let's start with multi-tools. You, you guys knew this one was gonna happen. If I'm talking about multi-tools, I'm gonna talk about the SOG Power Pint. I've already said that I do think it could be better. It could be made higher quality. But for what it is, the size, the tool set, everything, this thing, it, it really doesn't get better than this for me. This has been in my pocket pretty much nonstop since that Bass Pro video. 
I bought this on a whim because I saw it and I was like, huh, that's a nice size. And lo and behold, this has become my favorite EDC multi-tool bar none. In fact, I have, I have two of them. I have lost multiples and immediately buy another one. But obviously there are many multi-tools that are worth your money. Most of these being Leatherman. There is a Gerber in here. Uh, but these are the ones that if you're buying a multi-tool, I'm gonna recommend almost every single time. So we have the Power Pint, obviously. Charged TTI, honestly, a Wave is just as good. Surge is just as good. There's so many like this that are totally fine if you don't wanna spend the 180 for a charged TTI. You have the Free Series, P2, P4, both killer. Not everybody loves them because they don't like the magnets. Personally, I really like the Free Series. This one we'll talk about in a sec. Smaller Leatherman that I'm gonna recommend is gonna be the Ciela tool only because you can clip it to things and it's just got the core essentials, right? You've got a knife with a straight edge, you have pliers, and then you have a bit driver right here. Something really small and minimal is gonna be the Squirt PS4. This was my favorite EDC multi-tool until I found the Power Pint. This thing is just ultra minimal. And I think for the size and the price, you're getting more value out of the Power Pint. But the Squirt PS4 is also a very, very nice tool. And then we have the Gerber arm bar. This thing is driver, knife, scissors. So it's very similar to the Skeletool. And then you've got this, uh, like a reamer kind of deal. It's like the Skeletool, but I think in a better form factor. I think I've already said it like four times. You can't go wrong with any of these. If you want something a little more cost effective or, or budget friendly, you can go to Lowe's. I think usually on Black Friday or around the holidays, they typically put the rebar and wingman on sale. In fact, I know because I've purchased Leathermans for people in my life for like $30 at Lowe's almost every year. So you can get a Leatherman, a great Leatherman for very little money if you want, but my absolute top pick would be the SOG Power Pint. So the next item is gonna go alongside the, the Leatherman slash multi-tool recommendation, and it's two accessories from Leatherman that really take any multi-tool to another level. One being the Leatherman Ratchet Driver. This thing is worth its weight in gold. It's really, really nice. And then you have the bit kit. So this will work with the Ratchet Driver or you can use standard bits. So if you're not familiar with Leatherman, they do have interchangeable bits, but they use a proprietary flat bit that doesn't work in standard quarter inch drivers. If you get the Ratchet Driver, it then converts to a quarter inch driver. So you can use this with any bits you already have and it does still work with the flat bits if you want. This thing is awesome. It ratchets in both directions and you can actually turn off the ratchet by leaving it in the center. My favorite combo here though, this right here is a really sick combo. I like having these two together. So I don't typically keep this in my pocket, but I do have this and I keep this in a pouch nearby. All right, wallets. We're gonna keep this really, really simple. Open Sea Leather. I just did a video on Open Sea Leather and I've done another video on them talking about all the stuff they have to offer. You really cannot go wrong with Open Sea. And one additional, this is the Rustic Heirloom Carry Commission exclusive collaboration, but the Hitchhiker from Rustic Heirloom, my buddy Joe, one of my favorite wallets, probably my most favorite wallet yet and the most carried from me this year. I am currently, however, carrying the Kangaroo Leather Hobe Mini, but these two wallets right here, these are my picks. Hitchhiker from Rustic Heirloom, Hobe Mini from Open Sea Leather. All right, so knives. I have a selection here in different price ranges that I would recommend, but I have my favorites right here in a selection of price ranges. Let's start with the 50-ish dollar range, and that is the NAFS Lander. This also comes from Ben Peterson. And I'm gonna be honest, you see this thing straight up and it's kind of boring looking. And that's kind of the point. Ben wants knives that just kind of exist in the background. They are tools and they're really good for the money. And Ben has nailed that time and time again. The NAFS Lander is no different. And the reason I'm selecting this is because it's basically the Rat2 D2, but better. It fixes all the things I don't like about the Rat2 like the aesthetics. I don't like the size and shape. I don't like the ergonomics. This fixes that. This is slightly smaller, but feels better in the hand. And it's totally customizable. So Ben open sourced the scales for it. You can 3D print your own if you want, but there's a ton of scales and they're hot swappable. So you don't have to take the whole knife apart to put new scales on. Um, I, I just think for the money, about 58 bucks, this thing is ridiculously good. Moving up to the $100 range. And I, I'm only calling it that because 
This is more expensive. It, it was originally closer to 100. They're on sale for like 60 bucks right now. This knife for $60 is stupid. It's the Kaiser Assassin, comes in 154 CM blade steel. It is a flipper button lock with micarta scales. This thing came in the PO box one day. I'd never heard of it. I've not heard from Kaiser in a long time. I don't even think Kaiser sent this to me. I don't know who did, but this came in the mail and it went straight in my pocket for probably two months. Uh, love this knife. It's just really good for what it is and the money. And especially at $60, or I think that's what they're going for right now. Stupid, like really, really stupid good knife for that money. But I think originally they were closer to 80. I met a guy who works for Boker at Blade Show last year and we've stayed in touch and he sent me some knives just to check out to see what Boker has been up to. And this one, probably the coolest Boker that I've come across. I really like this. This is the Boker Plus Canoe from Joe Mangiafico. So it's his design. I love his design aesthetic. His trout knives are really, really nice. And this is no different. The canoe it has S35 VM blade. It's a titanium frame lock thumb stud. So these go for $150. And last I checked, they were on sale for like 120 on Blade HQ. Can't recommend it enough. It feels solid. It, it honestly, to me, feels almost like a more modern Sabinza. I know the lines are a little different, but it's got a very, very Sabinza-esque blade and design and shape. It is flat grind instead of uh, hollow, but uh, very Sabenza-esque for way, way cheaper. I mean, 150 bucks, 120 if it's on sale. Uh, I'm a huge fan of this knife. So moving up to the $250 range, I'm picking this. Um, not everybody's gonna love this knife. I think I have food left on it, if I'm gonna be honest. This is the Quiet Carry Drift. I absolutely love this knife. I included this in the list of 10 knives I will never sell. And it's because it has Vanek Super Clean and it is basically unrustable. Um, I'm sure you can rust Vanek Super Clean, but it is a highly corrosion resistant knife. And this version in particular is $300, so it's a little more than that budget I've set. But the G10 version is in stock on Quiet Carry, and it is $250 for the G10 version. I think about $250. Um, and for that, can't recommend it enough. If you go fishing in saltwater, or if you, like me, corrode basically every single knife, this is the knife that you should be looking at. Really, really good knife. One of my all-time favorites. Ergos are great. Size is great. Ridiculously good knife. There you go. Another really good, completely corrosion resistant knife. I think this one cannot be rusted. It has a dendritic cobalt blade, but they're calling it Teravantium. This is the PDW Invictus. It is a collaboration with Terrain365 to have this blade steel. Um, Patrick Ma is the guy behind both of those basically, but one of my favorite blade shapes and blade designs, period. This is also, it was also in that 10 knives I'd never sell. This is top of that list. I love this thing. And this is probably one of my most carried knives this year. Not probably, it is one of the most carried knives by me this year. And that's the PDW Invictus. These go for 380 and they're not always in stock, um, but there is also a compact version of this that sells for a little bit cheaper as well. Um, I will probably add a second one of these into my collection just because I like it so much. And then the final one was one of my favorite pickups this year, period. And the second most, if not a tie for most carried knife is the uh, McNeese PM Mac 2. This is the 3.5 version. Uh, I got this at Blade Show and I've carried the crap out of this thing ever since. And then I've carried it in both versions. There's a Auto Mac and the Mac 3.5. So this one's slightly smaller. This is in the $500 range. So very expensive. You, I know you're really gonna have to like the person that you're gifting these for, but if, if you're looking at this price range, I would recommend this over a Chris Reeve only because, I mean, I'm carrying a Chris Reeve now. I really like Chris Reeve, but you can't buy them at will. <laughs> so um, Jonathan is dropping these regularly, very regularly. They're much easier to buy and it feels just as tough and tooly as a Chris Reeve. So for me, I, I, I'm gonna recommend the PM Mac 2. Okay, flashlights, I have three recommendations for a AAA sized light, which is I think probably the most popular EDC style light there is. These are my picks. So the budget pick is not an O-Light, but a Streamlight MicroStream USB. So a rechargeable AAA sized light. This one is about $30, $35. I prefer this over just about any other 
uh, AAA size light in that price range. Anything under 50, I'm gonna recommend the Streamlight um, for that rechargeability. But there are two versions of this, one's black, one's Coyote. They have opposite interfaces. So this one defaults to high and then goes low. The other one is low than high. It's just like a tactical thing. Um, but if you're gonna spend more than 30-ish dollars on a flashlight, this one right here, you can't find it in titanium all that often, especially not on Amazon, you can't find it in brass. So um, these I think go for about $80 and this is the Raylite Pineapple Mini. And really, really, really good light for the money. But if you want something that feels nice and almost heirloom quality for around the same, I'm, I'm talking Prometheus Beta QR V2, this thing is really good. I'm going to pop this off because this is not how it normally ships. So it is a little, uh, it actually normally ships with this on the end. So it is more of a keychain style light. And this one has a twist interface. Uh, but you can optionally purchase an upgrade to have a clip on this if you would like, which is how I carry it typically. And, and if we're talking lights that I've been carrying lately, you guys probably would guess that it's something like an Okluma or a CWF but you'd be wrong. I am actually crushing on Phoenix lights right now. They aren't perfect, don't get me wrong. They do have things that I would fix about them, but these are the lights that I've been carrying for the last two, three weeks. Uh, so the one that's been in my pocket the most is the PD25R, that's like a, a 16340 light, uh, tail switch with a side button for brightness selector. And that right there, if you can see that, is really why I don't love this thing. It, it has a green cast to it until you get to medium brightness. Uh, so that's really the only thing that I don't love about this. This and it doesn't have a moonlight mode. The LD30 is kind of the same thing, just bigger, brighter. And then this one I really like actually, and that is the HM50R. So double click this and you have a red light or a blinking SOS in red. And if you just hold it, you have your normal brightness modes. All of these are USB recharging in some way. Both of these are USB-C recharging. You can just twist this little bezel and it reveals a USB-C port. The larger one, as you notice, LD30 does not have an R on it and that's because it's the battery inside this one that is the rechargeable part, which is not my favorite. Um, but my point and the reason I'm including these Phoenix lights is because I think they make really good lights for the money. Hard to get a bad Phoenix flashlight. Oh, should mention the HM50R is a headlamp as well. And this has become my backpacking headlamp. Um, only because it clips in really easily, you can rotate it down and you also have the red light. But you can put this on that headlamp strap as well, throw it off to the side. Uh, this is something I'd never thought of, but I saw LT Wright doing this at Georgia Bushcraft. I'm like, that is genius. You can turn any of your favorite flashlights into a headlamp. Like, what? Anyway, getting off topic. Pins are gonna be a little tricky because they are not cheap and not everybody wants a hundred dollar pin. But as far as EDC goes, that's about the standard. It's, it's pretty normal. Um, basically, I carry two brands. Sometimes I'll mix in a few others, but I always end up going back to one of these two brands. Tactile Turn big idea design. I'll put it this way. I really like big idea design for their interoperability with basically any refill ever. So those pins are great, but the ones that I've started carrying from big eye the most are these mini pins. Uh, the mini click like this one right here, super fidgety, very small. And it's not so small that I can't write with it still. This one we just opened up to show you cause I ruined mine. Long story short, I'll show you later. Uh, but this is probably my most carried pin this year. No joke. The uh, mini side click from Big Eye. This one's in Zerk with a Timascus clip. You don't have to go fancy with it. Um, but this is probably my most carried pin, period. Well, I say that. That was until the most recent pin I got from them. This is the Fountain EDC from Big Eye Design. I was not a fountain pin person, but I have literally had this in my pocket every single day since it came in the mail. I really like it. I still don't really consider myself a fountain pen person, but I carry a fountain pen every day. So take that for what you will. Really like this thing. These little mini pens start at about $70, obviously. Zirconium and stuff is gonna make it go up as well as the Timascus clips. This I believe is around 100. And then as far as tactile turn goes, if I'm carrying a bolt action, I typically go with tactile turn. The action on them is just perfect. They're fine tuned. They're heirloom quality. This thing feels tough and like it's gonna last longer than I will. They do have side clicks as well, but I really 
really prefer their bolt actions because they're just so, so smooth. But um, really, either one of these, great. You, you Just all great options on both sides. Basically, if you want something extra small or if you want something that works with basically any refill, big idea design. If you want something that feels really tough, made in America, tactile turn. Rapid fire for the last few items. This is one, uh, I have not spent a lot of time with these yet. I did get to spend a lot of time with Jordan and his family at Georgia Bushcraft, but Grim Workshop, they have this right here on Kickstarter currently, but they also have tons and tons and tons of other credit card sized tools and dog tag sized tools. They have tons of little miniature EDC tools like this. The reason I'm bringing this up, they also have a subscription service. It's $20 a month and you will never get the same card twice. Like you'd have to be subscribed for a long time to get the same card twice. They have cards for literally everything you could ever imagine. And they're not chintzy gimmicky stuff. They're actually useful. So you could gift a subscription to Grim Workshop to the person you, you love this year and I think they'd be really happy with it. It's fresh, new, exciting, fun, every single month, Grim Workshop subscription, check it out. All right, you guys have seen this. I've talked about it extensively, but this thing right here, let me tear it off my keys. This right here is one of my favorite things I have discovered since I started this channel. It is just a little glow fob. It just goes on your keys. It comes from Glow Rhino. It is tritium and it will glow for 20 plus years. Tritium has a half-life of about 12 and a half, so it'll continue to glow well beyond that but it will get dimmer and dimmer and dimmer eventually go out but this right here has saved me from losing my keys so many times they don't need to be charged like you know glow beads or glow studs or anything that is turbo glow these just glow on their own because they're slightly radioactive but because of that they're very very effective i use these when backpacking i attach them to my flashlights or anything else i need to find in the dark i attach them to my keys so i don't lose them I could not have enough of these things. You could buy me 20 of them. I'm gonna find a use for each one of them. Um, they also have some newer ones coming out. This is the original Tritium Glow Fob. Got a, a glass breaker on it. This one's about 40 or $45. They have all plastic ones that are actually 360 views. So these are have little windows, but there's one that's all plastic. Those are cheaper. And then they're coming out with like a little mini one as well. So Glow Rhino, Tritium Fobs, awesome. Okay, this next item is not just a Zippo, but if the person doesn't have a Zippo, get them a Zippo because Zippos are cool. But I don't like the lighter fluid refills that come in a Zippo. I just don't. The cartridge is just, eh. By the time I finally get around to using the Zippo, it's out of fuel because it all evaporated. So what I prefer is something like this. A butane insert. This is butane. You can also do a torch. Really, really effective. Doesn't evaporate. You do have to refill it more often, but Butane refills are clutch. My favorite is a recent discovery of mine. I learned about this from Andy Dickinson when I was at Georgia Bushcraft. So this is a soft flame and a torch in one. That is really cool. All right, this next one would actually combo really well with the tool burrito from the very beginning of the video. Litz is one of the best ways to get rust off of a knife. And then this red-eyed hog bee fat is a natural coating that you can put on the blade to keep it from rusting. It's made with um, lard or pig fat and beeswax. So it's food safe. You can put this on anything and then immediately go to cutting with it and, and eat off that blade. The flits will remove the rust. So it kind of fixes if you rust knives, you can keep this around and just wipe your blade down with it and it'll get rid of it. And this will actually protect it from getting rusted. But I prefer the red-eyed hog bee fat for that rust preventative. One, because it's natural, food safe, but also it smells like pig fat. It kind of smells like bacon. That's awesome. All right, finally, uh, my buddy Jordan recommended, he was helping me kind of bounce some ideas for this video. And he was like, why don't you include your bottle that you carry every day? And I would love to, I would love to recommend this bottle right here, but I'm gonna be honest, you shouldn't buy this thing. It's 160 some dollars just for a titanium bottle. And you would think it's, oh, it's because it's super lightweight or something. No, it's got this huge like billet for a lid. This thing is a heavy, right? It, it defeats the purpose of having titanium for weight savings. Plus you got water in it. It doesn't really matter. Um, a stainless bottle will probably be lighter than this because it's just so thick and heavy. This thing is not a weight savings device. What is worth the money is this bottle that I've carried for years and years and years. I do wish it were a little bit bigger. I need to check and see if they've got a larger version, but if you want a vacuum bottle, which this is not, this is a single wall, not super effective. This vacuum bottle from Zojirushi, 
I've had this thing for probably six years. It's worth its weight in gold. It's so good. I have literally made hot coffee, put it in here, forgot about it, came back the next morning, like 24 hours later, and took a sip and it was still scalding hot, like too hot to drink, which seems ludicrous. It seems like I'm faking that or making it up. I'm not. You can look online. Everybody loves these Zojirushi bottles. It's worth it. They're like $30, $35. They have a smaller one that's like 16 ounces. I think this one's around 20. I hope they have a bigger one. I would like to buy a bigger one. Awesome. It's got a little spring-loaded flip cap that has a lock on it so you don't accidentally open it. And that's really all you need to know. Oh, the other reason that people love this for coffee, it's coated on the inside so you don't get that stainless taste. That is one of the only features that people love about this titanium bottle. You can leave water in here for like three weeks and it doesn't taste like titanium because titanium, it, it just, it tastes like water. Whereas if you leave water in a bottle for two days, like a steel bottle for two days, it's going to taste like steel. Same thing with this. This is coated on the inside so you don't get that nasty taste. It doesn't transfer into coffee. This is why people love this for coffee. That's how I found out about it is the coffee community. But Zojirushi is like the gold standard of vacuum bottles for coffee, but also for whatever else you want to carry liquid in. That's it for this list and for this video. Thank you guys for watching. I hope it helps. I hope you can find a gift for the person in your life that loves this kind of stuff. That's that's why we do this. That's why I make these videos. And I hope it is truly helpful and beneficial to you. Uh, let me know in the comments down below what you would recommend that I missed. Uh, I'm probably going to do another video that's like a last minute guide or something that's, you know, not EDC related because I think that's also helpful. But Anyway, that's all for now. If you want to check out any of this stuff, it is linked down below. Also, thank you Koenigsegg for sponsoring this video. And if you want to support what I'm doing here, you can go to patreon.com forward slash best But I will see you guys next time. And until then, carry on.